Okay. So in our video series of dermatology crash course, in this video, we'll be talking about pemphigus vulgaris. We have a case here, a 38 year old lady presents to your clinic with fluid filled lesions all over the body. History of presenting illness shows that she was asymptomatic 20 days back, but then she developed swellings over the face and erythema, which generally spread to lower limbs and oral mucosa. She developed blisters and those blisters ruptured and they became erosions. This is a picture of those erosions that she developed. A biopsy was taken and she was diagnosed to be a case of pemphigus vulgaris. What is pemphigus vulgaris? How do you diagnose it? How do you treat it? Today, we are going to talk about that. Pemphigus vulgaris is basically an autoimmune disease in which immune system produces antibodies that destroy desmosomes that hold the epidermal cells of the skin together. What are desmosomes? To understand that, we have to understand the structure of skin. There is a basement membrane within the skin and over that basement membranes are lying the skin cells. Those skin cells are attached to the basement membrane by hemidesmosomes. Hemidesmosome is a glue that sticks the cells to the basement membrane. Then cells that are lying on the top of the basement membranes are held with each other by another type of glue that is called as desmosome. Desmosome hold the cells together. What happens in pemphigus vulgaris is antibodies are formed against these desmosomes. Antibodies are formed against the glue that hold these cells together. When there is no desmosome present between the cells, these cells are scattered around and they appear like this. Look at this. When the desmosome is destroyed, these cells are scattered around. That results in the formation of blisters that you see in a patient. If you see a picture of histology, whenever you take a biopsy and you see it under the microscope, you receive a picture like this. If you see the cells, these are scattered around. These cells are not attached to each other because the desmosomes are destroyed. That is the biopsy of a bulla, of a blister that forms in a pemphigus vulgaris patient. There is another technique called immunofluorescence. What you do in immunofluorescence, you, you stain the antibodies that have destroyed desmosomes. To look for those antibodies that have destroyed desmosomes, you add a stain. Since these antibodies bind to desmosomes and desmosomes are present around the cells, these antibodies are also present around these cells. So when you add this stain, that stain appears like this. That stain glows up around the cell. You receive a picture like this on immunofluorescence in which staining is around the cells where desmosomes are present, where the antibodies are present. Causes of pemphigus vulgaris are mainly idiopathic, but ACE inhibitors and penicillamine can occasionally cause it. Clinical findings include that these lesions are very painful, but they are not pruritic. They do not cause itching, but they are quite painful. And they involve oral mucosa, unlike bullous pemphigoid, as we discussed in our video on bullous pemphigoid, that bullous pemphigoid rarely involves oral mucosa. On the contrary, pemphigus vulgaris involves mucosa most of the time. There is a specific sign present in pemphigus vulgaris, in, which is called as Nikolsky sign. In Nikolsky sign, blister tear very easily. Whenever you scratch the skin, the skin pulls off over these blisters like a sheet and these blisters rupture. Why? It makes sense because these, the cells are not attached to each other in the epidermis. And whenever you apply a little force on these cells, these cells easily fall off, resulting in rupture of the blisters. For the diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris, biopsy is the most accurate test. On biopsy, either you see them under the microscope directly or you do immunofluorescent staining of the antibodies around the cells and you receive a picture like this. Treatment of pemphigus vulgaris includes systemic steroids, example, prednisone. Topical steroids are not enough for the treatment of pemphigus vulgaris. Pemphigus vulgaris is a very severe disease in which the skin barrier is damaged. The skin barrier is lost. That results in loss of water, dehydration and bacterial invasion leading to sepsis. So you must treat a patient of pemphigus vulgaris just as if the patient is having burns.
you give them antibiotics to protect them from infection you give them iv fluids to combat the fluid loss and you give them analgesic since it's a very painful condition if steroids are not working since it is an autoimmune disease and you have to suppress the immune system you either give steroids and if the steroids are not effective you have to go for immunomodulators that will suppress the immune system like mycophenolate or azathioprine or even in the severe cases iv immunoglobulins are also used iv immunoglobulins bind these antibodies that are targeting the desmosome and the antibody titer lower down resulting in the improvement of the patient's condition or rituximab a monoclonal antibody is used for the treatment of pemphigus vulgaris in severe cases in summary pemphigus vulgaris is an autoimmune disease which results from destruction of desmosomes that hold the cell together it is idiopathic ace inhibitor and penicillamine can cause it nikolsky sign is positive the lesions are very painful systemic steroids are used to suppress the immune system since it's an autoimmune disease and you have to treat sepsis and dehydration just like a burns patient and steroids if not working you have to go for immunomodulators iv ig and rituximab so this was pemphigus vulgaris check out my other videos on dermatology crash course if you like this video please hit the subscribe button thank you very much